Emily Jane and I am working with coaches and visionaries and entrepreneurs every single day of my life. I love visionaries. I love supporting them to create incredible businesses, movements of change, conscious movements of change and social movements of change. I love surrounding myself with visionaries and I thought why not bring those two worlds together? Those people that are striving to be and moving towards their visionary, entrepreneurial missions in this world and those people that are already living their vision and creating ripple effects right around the world. So I've got an incredible first guest for everybody, someone that inspires me. His name is Tom Cronin. He is the visionary of the Stillness Project and that vision, if, I, if I'm correct Tom, <laughs> is all about supporting one billion people to sit in stillness every single day. He's also working on an incredible feature film called Superhuman, which I'm really excited about talking to him all about what it actually is to be superhuman. I have a feeling that it's going to be uh, really, really relevant to visionaries. So Tom, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm great. It's a great wrap. So it's, uh, yeah, it's awesome to be here. Thanks for that. I'm honored thank to be you. here. So Tom, I'm really, I just wanted to start really with this vision, this big vision of one billion people sitting in stillness. What, where does that, where did that come from? What is the intention and what can that bring to the world? Yeah. I was always taught to think beyond the boundary line of where we're comfortable and you know I could have started out with a vision to have a hundred thousand people sitting in stillness daily but you know that's something that I feel I could achieve very quickly within a few years so then what would be my next vision. So I'd rather start with a vision that's going to keep me going for quite a while and a billion is obviously a vision that's going to keep me going for a while. But sitting in stillness is such a transformational experience for me in my life. It literally changed me. Now when I say stillness, it really is the process of meditation. And obviously with the world speeding up so much, everyone's nervous systems are really struggling to cope with the demands that we're putting on our systems. And we're seeing an an extreme amount of decay in people's lives and the quality of lives. We've got one in five people in, you know, one in five women in England suffering from anxiety. We've got 70% of Americans on pharmaceutical drugs right now. It's just crazy. And it's just symptomatic of an extor extreme distortion in our system. And what happens when we get into stillness is an incredible reorganization. And that's what happened to me. My body and my nervous system, my mind, it was completely distorted and I was experiencing uh, enormous amounts of, um, you know, discomfort and disease based upon that distortion in the way of anxiety and depression and insomnia and agoraphobia. And all of that just simply just dissolved and melted away when I started to embrace stillness on a daily basis. So it was so transformational for me that I realised that if I start teaching this to people, then it's going to be really transformational for them. And that got validated over the many years that I've been teaching thousands of people around the world. But time and time again, I've got these amazing testimonials of how women that had two years of postnatal depression that had gone within weeks and people that couldn't sleep and people that had anxiety, people that had relationship problems. All of that started to just simply melt away when they started to sit in stillness. So that's when I set my mission to be really big, to inspire a billion people through, you know, e-courses, blogs, feature films, books, um, public speaking, retreats, any which way I could to inspire people to embrace meditation daily. So that's that's ultimately what I wake up for each day. What? There's something so exquisite in stillness and in, in that silence. I like to call it before thought, before my thoughts rise. There's this place and... What, how would you describe it? What would you say is actually there? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, it is an exquisite place. There's an unboundedness there. There's, um, there's the you without the you. It's you without the identity, you without the measuring rod for who you perceive yourself to be. There's the you 
that doesn't have the conditioned mindset and the dogma and the, the memes that's programmed into you. I mean, 85% of what you believe to be you is simply just social conditioning. So who really are you? And in that stillness, you access that. And stillness is really the consciousness of being without the thoughts. And it's a remarkable place. But then again, it's important we don't get attached to accessing stillness in every meditation because it's actually really important we understand the mechanical process of meditation that it's not going to be possible to sustain stillness of mind because this, the le levels of rest are so profoundly deep when we do access stillness and our bodies are so riddled with stress that it does activate a stress-releasing process, a reorganisational process, and that does bring us out of the stillness. So it's important we clarify here before a lot of people listen to this call and suddenly start trying to access stillness and not find that they're going to be able to access it and get very frustrated and give up on that process. Um, so we need to sort of have a little, um, you know, an ad addition here and that, you know, get a good teacher that's going to teach you the mechanics of this process because uh, we don't want you getting frustrated that you can't sustain stillness because it's not going to be something you'll hold on to for long periods of time because stress in your body. Right, that's so true. So many people stop uh, stop that process because they assume they can't meditate, but the, there's a process, and the process is meditation. Mm -hmm. That's what I've found. And sometimes, some days I'm in, in that exquisite place longer than others. Sometimes, sometimes I don't get to it at all. Yeah, is that so, fairly normal? Absolutely. I've been meditating yeah. for 20 years, morning and evening. I've done countless you know, retreats of hours upon hours of meditation. And there's still many, many days where stillness just doesn't come. You know, it's just um, I still meditate. I have quite uh, an active mind during some of those meditations. There's, there's just some still some levels of stress that have been trickling out of the system. And yeah. that would be for every single student. It would be very difficult for someone in our lifestyle, unless you're in a monastery in Tibet um, or an ashram that you've been in for hours upon hours and days upon days, um, that you're going to be able to sustain stillness for a long period of time. How, why, why do you think it's really important? I think it's important for everyone to meditate if that's what they're called to do, but why would you, um, what, what could you tell me about how it could support visionaries in particular? People that inherently visionaries. Sure. Um, the thoughts that we have in our mind are as good as the data that's in your computer. And if you want to upgrade your computer, you know, you have to change the software. And the way our mind operates, the thoughts that are in our mind, you know, I mean, 85% of the thoughts that we have are already cycled thoughts of the day before and the day before and the day before. So we have this sort of constant recurring pattern of thinking. Now, most of that thinking was programmed into you from the age of 0 to 6 um, by the, the you know, surrounds that you're in. And then over time, you know, we just got conditioned to think a particular way. So if you think about what your thought processes are, you know, if you were brought up, let's just say, under the Taliban in a small little village as a goat herder in the remote mountains of Afghanistan, um, would your thinking process be the same as if you were brought up under a very right-wing Christian family in Ohio, under a you know, Republican you know, political party? They're going to be two very different ways of thinking. So what is thinking and, and how much freedom do we actually have with our thinking? And so a lot of us carry these very deep conditioned thought forms and they really just condition neural pathways that our mind sort of follows down. And it's not really our truth. Now, when we meditate, what happens is we get beyond all of that conditioning. We break free of that sort of very thin layer of what we seem to be reality. And we access this through a portal of meditation. It's not the goal. Meditation is the portal. Through the portal of meditation, we access this vast field of unlimited creative possibility. We break free the shackles of social dogma and we access this vast knowingness. And in that field of creativity, when our mind immerses in it, it comes out with these bubbles of like unlimited possibility. And this is what our film's are about, is that accessing this possibility um, you know, I'm making a feature film. I've never made a feature film in my life. I've got no idea about how to make a feature film. But I've just received funding to make this amazing feature film about human possibility. That came out of the field. Now, I couldn't have accessed that possibility um, by limiting myself through the social conditioning of my mindset. 
it was in the transcendence of meditation that I get these amazing impulses, and that's where visionaries really get these impulses. I call them intellectual impulses that come from the field. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just getting shivers as you're talking about that place because that, that's what resources me. And and when I conduct business or my life, my business this is my life from that place. Miracles happen. Mm. So is that is that that space that you really explore? In superhuman, what else is superhuman about? Yeah, I mean, it, it, superhuman is about the, the the qualities that are available to each and every one of us that we've known have been there for a long time, and these qualities are lying dormant in most of us. But that said, they are actually still within us. Enlightenment isn't something you go to a shop to get. It's not what you find on RSVP. It's not what you find, you know. In you know year hundred and fifty thousand dollar salary, it's not what you find in the nice person that you picked up at a local bar. Um, enlightenment is something that's inherent within us all, and we just need to access the the vehicles that are going to help us unlock those qualities that are already within us. So you're saying that it's not just the the monks in Tibet that have been meditating for forty years that can start to access. Abilities beyond the five senses. If I wanted to be really, really good at golf, um, I would just simply get trained and do what really, really good golfers do. <laughs> if I wanted to get good at golf, me going out drinking every night and smoking and working myself really hard and um, you know sitting around all day eating pizza and watching TV isn't going to improve my golf game. I actually have to go and learn from professional and I actually have to hit a lot of golf balls and then eventually I'd get really good at golf. There's no question. I could be really good at golf if I spend a lot of time learning how to get good at golf. If I wanted to get really enlightened, I'd have to find out what people that are enlightened were doing to get enlightened and I just need to learn from them those techniques and then simply start doing it. It's just really it's just a really simple process, and it's really covered well in a book by the um, who was it? He wrote Malcolm Gladwell wrote the Outliers. He said anyone that's really good at whatever they're good at is simply because they spend a lot of time doing it and learning from the best at getting good at it. If we want to get good at being enlightened, we simply just learn from the people that are in those spaces and do what they were doing, and it's really that's all it comes down to. We're just not doing a lot of it. That's all. We're not sitting in stillness because we're very distracted. Right, right, and 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 when we do, as you were saying, this this openness, this limitlessness, mm -hmm. is available to us. And when we follow it, like you followed, you'd never made a feature film. You may have never even thought of making a feature film until this inspiration of sorts. Is that what you would yeah. speak it as? Yeah, came to you, and you followed it, and here yeah. you are. <laughs> Of the, the see so what else we have here is that you can get impulses about possibility, and mm -hmm. I still struggle with this today. This is one of the things that I still struggle with is that the noise of the mind. You know, I've been meditating for 20 years. There's still some noise in my mind. This this communicator that talks in my ear that says, "Yeah, but you know what? You, seriously, you're Tom. You can't do that." You know, there's that noise, the voice that sort of says, "What? Why would you bother doing that? It's not. Come on, be serious. You can't." That's not for you. That's for the great people. <laughs> and so we have this little voice that talks us back out of these amazing impulses that we get, and then we kind of start to contract again because the voice starts up. And we need to sort of just find that little voice that talks us out of doing these great things that we, we all have the possibility of doing. Absolutely. I mean, I work with people every day, as I know that you do, Tom, that hear that voice, and but they're also starting to tap into this visionary place and, and that's what calls them to, to reach out to people like you and I and it's just about, to, it feels to me like just about developing and expanding that part of us so that that becomes the strongest muscle that yeah. really can create miracles, it does create miracles. And having faith in that, you know, that's the other thing is really trusting that, that the, the larger version of us, the larger um, mm. tr our inner truth rather than the smaller little voice, the little ego that kind of has been programmed since you were, you know, a little kid. So it's about, you start as a meditator, start to access these two worlds, and not just meditators, I mean everyone has this, this vastness, this capacity within us. Meditation is just the portal 
um, and we can access more of that within us through that portal. But that said, everyone has that, whether they've got the portal or not. And there might be many different portals to access this, and I'm sure lots of people out there are using other modalities that are allowing them to access this vastness, this inner truth. And we just have to have a little bit more trust and faith in our inner intuition and our inner creativity and less, um, less acknowledgement to that little voice that self, self-doubts and self-sabotages all the time. What is that vastness? Hmm. Can it be put into words? <laughs> <laughs> that could be something we cover in uh, six days of a retreat in Bali in May, but um, that vastness in, uh, in this conversation, which we've got a few moments to cover, um, it's an unboundedness, it's divinity, it's infinite capacity. Some would say God. Um, we like to sort of steer away from that terminology because it has many connotations with people's religious beliefs. Um, it's, it's you without the forms of your mind and body and emotions. It's the oneness. It's the universe. Uni is one. And um, really it comes down to that. It is just one. When is uh, your film out? Is it due out soon? I'm really going to watch it. Uh, we'll be into, um, we're going into pre-production and production and post-production over 2015, so you'll be um, seeing it hopefully early 2016. We're looking to release in Sundance, February 2016. Awesome. Oh, really? Sundance? Yay. I have a feeling that um, I'm speaking to you at a really pivotal time. Before, see, I mean, you, I mean, you've been taking off for a while now. I've been watching it, but this, uh, this is this, there's something more, and it's just about to to take off. So I really thank you for your time. I know that you're really busy moving through that last phases of getting this film out, and I'm really, I'm truly excited. I love the title. You told me about it a, a little while ago. It never left me. I always knew I was going to ask you more about it, so thank you so much. If people want to find out more about you and what you do, is, is stillnessproject.com the best website to visit? Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be the first place to start with, stillnessproject.com. They'll be able to find Stillness Project on all the social medias, the Instagrams, the Facebooks. Um, I think on Facebook the actual web domain is Stillness Project, but the actual page title, um, I'm not allowed to change it um, under Facebook rules, so it's under Tom Cronin. So they can find Tom Cronin and Stillness Project all over the place if they just Google. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Tom, and thanks everyone for listening and joining in on my first, our first, uh, 15 Minutes with Visionaries. I will be interviewing many more visionaries in the coming weeks, so please join me. You can visit me at my website, nataliejane, J-A-Y-N-E dot com, and find out more about myself as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Tom, and talk to you soon. Ciao. Bye. Bye.